Urban preppers will die. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. I know that's blunt, but I feel it's the truth. I feel that everybody in urban environments in a big um, event, collapse, world war, civil war, revolution, financial collapse, EMP, whatever it may be, are basically screwed. Um, and I know a lot of you aren't going to like to hear this, but I'm saying it like it is. Um, and one thing I want to note really quick here in the, in the beginning is that my speech patterns, the way my brain works, is that I usually pick up steam as the videos progress. So a lot of them, maybe they're not that great in the beginning, but please watch because I tend to take a pick up steam and the second half of the videos is usually way better than the first half because my brain is rolling and functioning by then. I've had some TBIs from the military, so I apologize if I stumble over words, stuff like that. And another little admin thing really quick. Uh, if you guys enjoy preparedness channels, you want to support us, me, the community, then please subscribe, ring the notification bell, hit that thumbs up. Super thanks, the little heart with the thanks in it. If you want to donate to this channel, very appreciated. Um, we also have Patreon links in the description below, lots of content there, a dollar a month. And yeah, so let's get on with the video. Why do I say these things? Because of the population density and the complete and utter lack of producers. Cities are consumers, not producers. Uh, they may be producers um, in a, uh, um, see here I am stumbling, in a um, uh, industrial sort of way. But even that we've given up. So, oh, uh, and side note here too, a lot of, some people may be wondering, they're like, how come you're talking about this video and it has nothing to do with this? Well, it, you're right. It doesn't have anything to do with this, really, but we'll kind of talk about that a little bit also. Why do you, why do you have it on you? Okay, well, I live in a rural environment, and this time of year, um, we've had some cougar sightings around here and some bear sightings around here. So, hey, you know, my kids are out here in the yard, always have it on me or very close to me because I need to and because I'm smart. Anyway, I'm not doing it to make a point or maybe all cool guy or anything like that. This is just part of my life. It's just a tool just like my hammer, my shovel, anything else. Anyway, okay, so let's get on to it. Population density. And we'll take, for example, the, this video, so we'll pretty much be talking like, say you live in an apartment um, because suburban is different and uh, if you live in different situations in the city, it may be different. But let's just talk about like in your apartment. You live in an apartment in a city um, and you're a prepper. First of all, don't get me wrong. Don't take what I was saying in the beginning as you're not doing anything good. Because if you are a prepper, and if you're of the preparedness mindset, hey, at least you're there. At least you're awake enough to realize how smart preparedness is. Prepping is living insurance. Remember that, it's very important. So, apartments and prepping. First off, you don't have a lot of room to stockpile food, water, etc. You could get a storage unit somewhere else, but then again, you're in the city. Are you going to be able to get to it when all the roving bands of crazy people are out starving, running around, causing problems? Maybe, maybe not. What about also if you're in an apartment, security is a big one. Can you secure an apartment? No, you cannot secure an apartment. I've heard comments, people say, oh, well, I have this defensive tool, this defensive tool, and this defensive tool. I know how to use them and stuff like that. I'll defend my... Uh, to me, an apartment is just a room. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like a real house. I get some apartments are probably twice, three times the size of my house, <laughs> but it's an apartment. So it's stacked on top of a bunch of other things, limited access, which means limited egress. Also, even if you're on an exterior and you got one of those ladders that drops down like you see in the movies and stuff like that, or a stairway or something like that, it's still limited in ingress and egress. You basically have one door coming in and maybe that out the window. Okay. You are also, so basically if somebody wants to take you out, all I got to do is just burn the whole building down and you're SOL. And you're like, oh, but you living in the country, they can do that too also. You're right. They can. So that's a wash. Well, let's just call that one a wash. Okay. So another thing is people say, okay, got these defensive tools. I'm going to defend it. All right, well, what do you think? You think the interior walls or exterior walls on an apartment building are ballistically protected? No, they're not. 
So all somebody has to do is, you know, knock or something like that, and they hear the ch -ch -ch or something like that, you know, or go away, or we'll, we'll, we'll shoot. What are they going to do? They're just going to be like, bah, 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 you know, open up and just like pff, level everything in the room. No problem. And then you're SOL. All right. But here's another one. You can say, but your house, rural, also is not built ballistically protected. Correct. You are right. That is true. Very true. And we're going somewhere with this, so stick with me. Um, so, hey, okay, let's call that a wash. All right? I want to be real here with you guys and not make it look like everybody that lives rural is way better off than everybody in the city because I want to be realistic here. Okay, so that being a wash. All right. So, how else would you defend your apartment building full of people you don't know that may be part of the problem, maybe some of them are part of the solution? You can't even have, just amongst that one building, say that's like your property, kind of like. Like, I live in my house and I have property. Okay, so that's your property. Um, and your, your AO, your area of operations. How are you going to, can you secure that? No, you cannot secure that area because there are too many threats already there, maybe across the hall from you, maybe above you, maybe below you. You don't know. How many people do you know, if you're living in an apartment or living in the city, how many of your immediate neighbors, people that live within, you know, 100 yards of you at least, I mean, how many of them do you actually know? Do you know anything about whatsoever? <clears throat> in 100 yards of me, there's only two houses. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, 100 yards that direction, about 100 yards that direction, and about 100 yards that direction. So right on the limits. Um, so what is the advantage of me being in this situation? I don't think my property is defensible, but it's way more defensible and escapable than an apartment in the city. Because I can just start run through the woods. I can jump in my truck whoa, via rural dirt roads, back roads, and stuff like that. I can be out of here. Before, while all the major roads are being shut down by whatever, if that's the situation. So that's good. I can build LPOPs and fixed fighting positions, which is listening posts, observation posts, and fixed fighting positions like foxholes, different em em embattlements, basically. Something that is ballistically protecting me while I stand guard. I have those in different areas of my property. I can man those. Not all by myself, true, I still need help, but I have tribe very close to me. Um, and I would probably actually go to one of their properties is because they're set up a little bit better defensively than I am. But if I had to, I can reach out, I can, you know, 100 yards away, I can attempt to stop the bad guys instead of right at my front door. So that's an advantage of living rural. Cities. I've heard the comment before, and I mentioned in another video, where, oh, there's so many grocery stores, there's so many stores in cities, we're fine, we'll be good for food. No. 24 hours. Maybe 72 hours that a lot of people say the grocery stores will be wiped out. I feel it would be closer to 24 hours than it would be 72 hours. But anyway, I don't know everything. Um, so another thing about living in the city. We talked about producers and consumers. People in the city are consumers. They don't produce because there's nowhere for them pr to produce. You can't raise your own animals in the city for the most part. You also can't grow a big garden in the city for the most part. And I'm speaking generalities here. Of course, there's exceptions to every rule. You may have a big house on a bunch of property in city limits. Okay, that's different. I'm talking about people in a, basically like in an apartment. You can grow some food inside maybe raise some animals if you eat like rabbits or different things like that, if that's in your dietary uh, menu, then maybe. And you may be able to grow some food under grow lamps, hydroponics, aquaponics, whatever the system may be. I don't know that much about that because I don't live like that. I build raised beds and in-ground gardening. But the fact is you cannot produce enough food to feed yourself or your family in the city. So you will have to go into your food storage. And your food storage is great that you have it, no matter how much you have, even if you only have a week, it's better than nothing. Uh, but then you start getting into that food storage, which starts that stopwatch on your life. Okay, we now have six months to live because we just started eating this, because you can't produce. 
You also can't go foraging, hunting, fishing, trapping, snaring, all these things because you live in the city. So you can't do those things. Think about how many people are going to be in Central Park when SHTF happens, <laughs> the, like a big event, thinking that they're going to go there for food, plants, stuff like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, that won't last very long. Um, and another thing is, okay, so you, started, you started that stopwatch. And that stopwatch is a lot has a lot less time on it than my stopwatch. Why? Because space, like I already mentioned, in an apartment, you don't have that much room to stockpile food. You have some, maybe, and maybe you can fill up your whole apartment with it, pretty much make little pathways through and stuff like that, but that's no way to live, and it's a fire hazard also. It's dangerous. So you're limited on how much you can stockpile. Thus, you're limited on how long you can live on it. And since you're not a producer, you're going to have to rely on that pretty much solely. Me, I'm a producer. I produce way more in my garden than we eat in a year. Way more. Now, does it meet all my caloric needs? No, it does not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that everything that comes from our garden is not eaten immediately by my family. We dehydrate a lot, can, and can stuff, barter, trade, give away to support my tribe. Yes. And they, in return, the people within my tribes, lots of them, produce animals, raise animals. So I can trade all the stuff that I grow for some meat also, which is good to go. You're not going to have that in the city. Your next door neighbor, the person down the road from you, doesn't have a farm because you live in the city. That's why I say urban preppers will die in SHTF unless the main big caveat, you get out in time. I know there's a million excuses under the sun for everyone that hasn't moved out of the cities yet. But the fact is, that's all they are. They're excuses. You can downsize your life. You can simplify your life. You can move rural. You can get a job that pays a lot less. You're not going to have all the fancy things anymore. But I'll tell you what, you'll have the things that truly matter, which is your family. More time to spend with your family, actually loving them, actually being a father, actually being a mother, getting your hands dirty, playing with the kids, gardening, all this kind of stuff. But please, and all the country people out there will, will comment also about this. Don't move here. We don't want you. I get it. I'm not saying everybody move because everybody's not going to watch this video. The people watching this video, though, are probably people that are of the mindset of preparedness. But get your mind right before you move rural. You don't move there and tell them how to change. You move there and you change to their way of life. You don't try to bring your big city ideas into the country and ruin the country like the cities are now. Leave all those big city ideologies in the big city. Move rural, it's a totally different way of life. Slower, but I feel a lot more meaningful. Stop chasing that huge paycheck and buying all the fancy things. Simplify your life, move rural, adapt yourself, change yourself to conform to that style of living. And you might just survive. Or like I said, if you got bug outs, bug out locations, routes, caches, all that stuff like that in a tribe of people, and you are able to get out in time before all the roads are clogged with traffic and all the other things going on, then you might just survive. But if you stay put in the city during a major event, you will die. I love you guys. I want to empower and uplift you guys. I want to bring you down. I know it's going to upset some people. I'm just speaking the truth because this is the truth. Have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.